What's up all you cool cats and kittens? Thank you for joining Tales from the Flipside. This is the Modern Book Playbook Roundtable. Today we're going to be playing Dealer Flipside. But before we start, let's go ahead and introduce the players. Thanks thanks for the 1950s intro, Aaron. This is Sleepy John. Uh, I'm Sean, uh, Big Leg. How you guys doing? Uh, Phil, Vintage Comics and Toys. Uh, Joe, Red Hood Comic. And I'm Aaron, and you can catch me on Comic Book Food Chain. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get started with Dealer Flipside. So our first set of books are going to be Amazing Spider-Man 569 second print, uh, CGC 9.6. This sold for $462.72 American dollars from Canada. And then our second book is Venom number three, the third print variant, 9.8. White pages, custom label. So I don't know who wants to kick it off, but it's up to y'all. I've been seeing a little bit more chatter about uh, Anti-Venom 569. Second print obviously makes sense with the cover. We are kind of in this lull space with where Null is going. I think people that are comic savvy know that Null is just not going to go away forever. So they're looking at... When is that going to actually dip? I don't think this is the dip right here. You know, I, I definitely have a 569 in my uh, my own collection. No, I, I don't care about as much right now. So I'm, I'm definitely going anti-Venom right now. I think there's more upside on that one. Uh, I think I think I do anti-Venom also as well. Um, it's always it's tough for me to choose... Uh, uh, nine six over nine eight usually um that's that's a uh, the difference uh sort of being um you know that being that being the third print uh variant you know being you know probably there on the cover and everything like that i think that's pretty cool uh for null uh definitely do like with the anti venom on there as well being you know also <laughs> a, la a later print um but you know making the cover like that is is pretty important um the the difference is sort of I think um, you know Venom three being out of the a little bit more of the speculation era, so uh, there are definitely people um, looking towards this and being able to pick up back copies and stuff like that. Whereas the five sixty nine I think sat around probably a little bit longer. Maybe got uh, I mean I, I don't know the print runs on each, but but might have got a little more beat up on shelves. Um, you know, the, the Venom 3 was recognized within the time of its printing uh, to where people could still savage really high-grade near-mint copies. So um, I think uh, a 569, haven't looked at Census at all, uh, I think the 569 is probably, um, it's prob definitely tougher to, tougher to grade um, and definitely less likely uh, to, find, to find them floating around anywhere. And, there, and it sat around for a lot more years, I think, than uh well than any years whatever venom through whenever i don't exactly when the third print came out but <clears throat> so yeah getting that book fixing that book pressing that book and getting high grades out of it are become becoming a lot dip, a lot more difficult um so in my mind to be honest uh probably more equal i normally would go nine eight um i don't care about the custom label uh, and but uh so i think for myself i think i'd probably go with with the 569 second print but uh like john said uh no no's not going to be gone no's not going to be gone forever um you know a much more powerful player in marvel than than anti-venom is or is uh probably gonna be so um yeah but uh just a gauge of the errors of these books and uh the treatment of these books and without looking at the census i'm gonna go 569 yeah, so for me, um, I know the five sixty nine is it's it's a really difficult book to have, and um, it's been in the spec. Um, let's say uh, it's been speculated for quite a while in the market, and more than more than no, okay. Um, but I mean, Venom three third print nine eight that book hit a thousand dollars, like last year and 
that was kind of crazy. And people were thinking like, damn, this Venom 3 third print CGC 9.8 is going to be like, is, what is this going to be like in 10 years? Is this going to be like an FF5 first Doctor Doom? Like, is it? does it have that potential? Like, people were actually like thinking about that and pondering. Um, yeah, so Null's dead. Um, however, the spec for him, well, it's going to have to follow Gore the Butcher uh, with that uh, Christian Bale casting. So um, he may be dead in the comics, but I don't think Null is too far away for live action. Um, there's a ton of copies of this out there in the 9-8. Yeah, you know, the custom label actually does something for me because the people who buy these books, they like these little gimmicky things on, on slabs. So um, I would buy the Venom 3 um, third print CGC 9.8. Um, it would be a little bit of a long-term play. I wouldn't say, like, a long, long time, but maybe maybe, maybe two years. You get some... Uh, you get double money double on your money so i'd go with uh, venom three third print i one thing that you guys both touched on so far was that custom label i will say i just sent a bunch of spider-man in for grading and i i did the custom label on all of them because it was five bucks more and i've seen prices get just a little they've got enough more on resale to make the five bucks worth it that makes sense uh, Venom third print, final answer. It's cheap, bomb weather cheap. Dylan's got some of Noel's codex still in him. That's how if uh, Donny Cates left a little nugget, if someone wants to continue uh, writing uh, and bring Noel back. So, um, yeah, Venom three third print nine point eight custom label final answer. Is there, is there any, uh, are there any null books that you guys would rather have than a five sixty nine nine point eight second print? Like, if the grade were equal, the grade were equal to five sixty nine over any null book, right? That's I, I would too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. What What's the other one where he's sitting in the chair? Uh, uh, the all black cover. But, isn't that like a Venom Five, but it's like a. The con store variant. No, Frankie's, uh, Frankie's var variant. No, no, no. I'm sorry. The anti venom one. Oh. Mm. Uh, it's I'm the second sure. print where he's sitting in a chair and it's got the the tube next to it. I'm not sure. Know. You guys would know it. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> some, somebody watching is like, you idiot, it's this book. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so I think I would actually go with the Venom 3 third print also, but I would wait for it to dip down a little bit more, like closer probably to like the $400 range before, you know, throwing that kind of money onto a book. Um, I mean, I guess I could also see 569 keep on rising a little bit, but to me, I think the market's <coughs> going to be a little bit more familiar with Null. And it, like, you know, it'd probably be it probably be so long, like everyone said already, that when he comes back, it's like, oh, where is that book? You know, everyone's scrambling to find their copies or whatever. Uh, and then for the shock twist, on the same day, a Venom 3 third print uh, sold for $420 without the custom label. So like John was saying that there, uh, there is a premium, I guess, price for the uh, custom label. And then for our next set of books, we have Swamp Thing number one at a 9.0 and Naomi number one, 9.8, the convention edition. Uh, let's start with Sean. Uh, for me, <clears throat> first thing, anything with the fire and key emoji in the title, there's no way I could go against that because that's clearly, that's where all my bids go. Like literally I actually have eBay searches set up for different emojis and those are two of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like, it's Ooh, just- That's a good you know, tip. <laughs> you know, you know, hey, you know, and, and you know what, when someone says it hot, it must be, you know, or like possible 9.8, but uh, yeah. So anyway- you, um, had to, you had to turn your searches off for rare, I heard. Rare. <laughs> oh, yeah. Too much. 
hitting too yeah, hard. Pretty, pretty, pretty much, pretty much. I use the term so. Uh, I mean, to me, I mean, okay, so Swamp Thing really, really took a jump. Um, uh, Swamp Thing number one did. It was uh, what, probably about two years ago um, uh, with with some of the show news and stuff like that. But just when some of the um, – because the House of Secrets 92 just kept definitely creeping up and people actually started to realize how difficult and rare House of Secrets 92 was in a high grade. Um, so uh, Naomi be here to stay – uh, it's, it's really hard for me to do, uh, D DC, DC, like if this was a Marvel character being pushed like this, I think we all know that would, there'd be, uh, there'd be a one before the four or something like that. Uh, it's, so to me, it's like that, uh, being DC, um, uh, I think they'll, they'll be able to do Swamp Thing right again someday. There was, there was a movie that I actually liked in the eighties. Um, they'll be, they'll be able to do Naomi one. Um, okay. But they just, uh, I know they're trying with young justice and stuff, but they're, and you know, the T the Titan show is good. Um, but they're not, they're just not building the young universe that Marvel was building before we even sort of, or some of us at least sort of caught on to what they were sort of getting to. And, uh, you know, well, I guess it helped merging with Disney, but, um, so I think I think they're both really good long term books. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure. I don't think that's a new hire or anything for that Swamp Thing. But any of those DC seventies books are so difficult and high grade. Um, to I mean, you know, I, this is this is probably going down to personal taste with me. But that Swamp Thing one, um, and there's probably other guys like me with that Swamp Thing one if they were able to get a nine o or better that might just be like sitting in, in their safe and you're not going to be able to find any more until, uh, you know, in, in, until, uh, until we get a 2008 crash or something like that, where stuff's coming for sale. So, uh, I th think you can get that, um, you can get the Naomi, um, convention. I think there's probably one for sale every day. Uh, there's usually one, uh, on eBay it could be wrong or wherever. So to me, I'm going to long term, I'm definitely going to take this one thing. Number one, uh, with the Naomi, Naomi news that we've been having, uh, that, I mean, if that's, that's all that that book's at, I just think Swamp Thing has a nice, nice, uh, deep future and historical, uh, historical cover and a long, you know, a long time, uh, been in the comic world and, uh, the DC universe here. So to me, I'm, I'm taking, I'm taking Swamp Thing. All right, I'll go. Um, so one thing that I've been noticing is that these like vintage horror books are are moving again. Um, I've been getting inquiries um, on my eBay pay eBay account, like, "Hey, what's your best price on this and this book and this and that?" And they're they're premium, you know, DC horror covers from the Bronze Age. Um, so just not looking at the spec properties of Swamp Thing or Naomi. Um, um, just, just look at the market overall and how desirable Swamp Thing is um, that Sean was saying. Um, I'd go with Swamp Thing number one in the 9-0. I mean, it was only like, I think it hit like 350 when the uh, first season came out, right, on stream. Um, it was really, really well received. Um, we'll see. We'll see if uh, they bring back that series. It comes to fruition. Um, but uh, yeah, Swamp Thing One Nine O is kind of a difficult book to get. I've I've submitted a couple to CGC. I've 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 never hit that Nine O when I thought I actually thought I had it. Um, so. With a desirable cover, Len Wein, um, you know, Bernie Wrightson, legendary creators with input on that series. Yeah, I'd have to just buy the Swamp Thing 190 just for just the historical uh, importance of that book. And I, I would just hold it, and I know the money's going to come back around on that. So that'd be my pick. All right, we got a new challenger. What's up, Joseph? 
What's up, fellas? So you caught our second book. Uh, we're comparing Swamp Thing and Naomi One. So Swamp Thing's at a 9.0, and the Naomi is a 9.8, the convention edition. Uh, Swamp Thing all day, final answer. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Um, I mean, I've got some Naomi books, so um, I, don't, I don't have a Swamp Thing number one. That's a respectable grade. And... Uh, I, I know she's been optioned. That book hasn't really moved all that much, though. If, other than, I guess, 455 bucks. Huh? What's the uh, cover A go for? Uh, I'm not sure. When, I, when I saw this pop up, I was like, wow, that's that's going for 455 right now. <laughs> um, if you, I'm sure most of us know somebody that's, that went to uh, SDCC. This book was given away for free, the Naomi. And they just kept, from what I understand, they kept pulling out stacks of them. And I did hear some people were allowed to get more than one copy if they wanted. I believe it was also given away at NYCC that year. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure they had it at two conventions. I think and you're right. I don't think the print run is low at all compared to a book like the uh, third print. I think it's a much better buy. The only thing that's going to change the pricing on this at this point, when I see that price, is what is the story going out to the masses? Are they thinking that this was a convention exclusive, which it was, but that doesn't mean that it was low printed, and that's where the discrepancy is going to be. Yeah. Usually a convention exclusive is low printed. Yeah, that's a good point. The Naomi, I like this series a lot. I think if they do the show right, it'll be a big success. But it's got a short window. And I've stopped really specking on anything DC because they just have proven that they don't know what to do with live action properties. Um, I do have a number of Naomi's, including this one. Not not graded, but I'll send it in if it's getting this price. I'd rather have the Swamp Thing long term. Naomi, quick flip. Um, I, I, I just doubt that DC and Warner brothers will be able to get it to live action. They've killed, they killed, uh, uh, Yara Flora wonder woman before it even like got into casting. Why? I don't know. Was it to sell comics? I don't know. But you know, I have, I have doubts on something like Naomi making it to live action. Well, you know, I, I've said this before. I mean, if, if I'm trying to choose, uh, like say the swamp thing, I, I'll buy the graders notes just to see if there's any meat on the bone, and uh, I'd, I'd I'd buy the nine O all day long over over a Naomi number one. Now maybe a millennial might might think uh, you know uh, a Naomi number one may have some more upside. It could, but for me, swamp thing number one and a nine O. With the chance, maybe at a nine two nine four all day long. So, as a millennial, I would not buy the Naomi number one. I definitely oh. remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking around, but I, I am technically in that branch. Um, I would buy a Swamp Thing. I remember that show growing up as a kid. Like, I loved it. Like, you know, that that probably got me back in the comics, and then even the newer series. Um, so to answer someone's previous question, the last sale of a 9.8 uh, cover A first print was 255 oh, For wow. For this uh, convention exclusive, there was one that sold for $500. And it's hard for me to believe that someone would pay $500 for a comic book that was given out for free. I mean, I guess it could be the misleading, misleading convention edition title and stuff like that. But... Uh, I think it's definitely that stigma of what well, was good. It was a convention. So, you know, it had to be a short print run and it costs whatever. Yeah. It, they, these were given out for free. Yeah. So that's, yeah, I'd imagine that's probably it. Right. And I could be wrong, mean, but, but go ahead. I, I was going to say, I, I think the, this convention exclusive has, uh, undersold the cover a and the cover b for that matter for like a the past couple of years right yeah I mean, it, it just was, recently it i paid like 20 bucks for mine 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It was fifteen twenty dollars raw. Um, the day it was given away until the it was announced that they were doing the show. From fifteen to twenty all day long. Yeah, it's gotta when, be it's um, gotta be lack of knowledge. When Naomi hit issue number three is when I think it popped because it was getting uh, big media coverage. And if you recall at the time, it was up around hundred bucks for all for the cover A and the and the variant cover. Yeah, the variant I mean, cover actually sold a little bit better than cover A for a while. Then it then they switched. Well, even for issue one, there's still second or third prints for it also. Yeah, that's what that's why I think third print is a play on Miami number one. Sweet. This this this, one. this day and age, <laughs> this day and age, it is. <laughs> All right, for sure, it'd probably be the lowest print. What was the print? I'm sorry, what was the print run on on the, uh, A and B covers? Oh, uh, plenty. For right. some reason, forty. Is sticking in my head, but I'd have to verify it. Forty or sixty. Can't yeah, I'm I'm the worst at when it comes to looking up numbers on uh, Comic Cron. Like I still understand that fully, but I'm getting there. <laughs> you want a hint? This is what I do. I, like I'll look on the slab for the date, then go to Comic Cron and search by the date, and then yeah. you can easily find the book there. It's the easiest way I found to do it. Yeah, yeah that's so, how I do it. And maybe Sean yeah. told me because I had to ask. I'm like, how the hell do you navigate? It's it is the most non user friendly. Uh, yeah, it's until you hit a certain year though. It's when like that time gap like really separates, or is that just me? Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it only it only goes back so far. Right. And, then, uh, and I think that year there's only like, two released months, like March and September or something like that. Gotcha. It's weird. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to our next set of books. So I chose uh, Power Puff Girls number one um, at a CGC 9.8 and Ice Cream Man number one at a 9.8. So the Cartoon Network starring Power Puff Girls sold for 610 and Ice Cream Man sold for 600. Sleepy, what do you think? I think that Power Puff Girls is a is a factor of what is available on the market at the current time. Cause I don't think people really have, you know, there's not a mass of Powerpuff girls, nine eights on eBay ice cream. Man number one, I can't believe it's still selling for that much. Um, you know, the, the book is, a, it was made really well. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's like a glossy thicker stock cover. So I don't, I don't know what the census on it is, but, and it's not like there was. It's going to be a high print run. I just think it's. Uh, you could buy a raw, nice raw copy and probably submit it and get a nine eight. I, you know, this is a tough one. I'm not a big fan of Ice Cream Man. I read you know 20 issues of it. It's. It doesn't really do much for me in terms of. They're all individual stories, this and that. Um, boy. I got, oh. I got, I got, I got, I'm like, can I pass? Is it, is a pass an option? <laughs> I'm going to take $600 and buy one of those. No, one of those previous Spider-Man books. 569. Yeah. <laughs> what, what year is that Powerpuff, mm -hmm. Powerpuff Girls? Uh, let me look it up real quick. Uh, but to answer some, uh, your question, there's 334 nine eights on the Ice Cream Man number one. So let me find the Cartoon Networks. You know that Power Puffs is a newsstand too. <laughs> it might be. Dude, yeah, which I I pulled up the census. Do you know what? Do you know what year the the cartoon the Power Puff Girls is? But there's because there's like apparently more Power Puff Girls comics than I thought. Yeah, it's called Cartoon Network, starring uh, number one. Like they did like thirty or some issues when they did like Samurai Jack and a bunch right. of there's a bunch of first appearances throughout there, but uh um I, I guess like ninety six, ninety five. All right. There's yeah, all right, well um I'll <laughs> I'll go 'cause I, I don't I don't I don't have a clue. That that one sort of blows that one sort of blows me away. The uh Powerpuff Girls, just some sort of random bidding war is what is what I assume is happening. 
<laughs> ice cream man you get you get with that and I'll, I'll just be honest i don't i don't know a lot about girl cartoons from the early 2000s um because if I was watching those in college or whatever, that that have been an issue. Uh, so, uh, I, I suppose I'll, I mean I'm going to go with Ice Cream Man just because, like, you told me I could only have one, and because it's, it's 600 bucks, you can I could probably hope for something on the Ice Cream Man. And uh, like he said, uh, you know, it's about probably about what's available. Um, nobody bothered to slab that. And now once people start seeing $600 sales that know they have backstop, backstop, uh, back stock of this crap, they're going to go ahead and try to slab it. And, I mean, I've been doing it for years, just weird stuff. I find in boxes that I bought over the years that I think is a possible nine, eight. Well, just sub that and let's just see how it goes. And you can just say you've got one of the only five or two or 10 or something like that. And it sort of always worked. Um, I guess I got to go through every comic I have. If uh, Powerpuff Girls nine eights are getting six hundred bucks, um, yeah. So the website I'm seeing um, it says you're unknown for the uh, for the Cartoon Network book, but there's a total of four graded at a nine eight and twenty one blue labels, and it, the lowest grade on the census is a two or no eight oh eight oh. At uh, 8 there's two out of 8-0. The fact that somebody graded 8.0 is <laughs> uh, All right. <laughs> yeah, for me, um, yeah, Ice Cream Man. I uh, I don't I don't think it's going to be on a, a a pretty good streaming network um, from the whispers I've been hearing. So. Then you got the powder power puff girls, right? They're uh they're gonna get a movie. We've gotten some stills that look extremely awful, I think. Um, and extremely cheesy. I can't believe they couldn't make it animated and it's now well, you got Chloe Bennett, she's really popular, right? Um, who plays Quake in the Shield. Um Oh man, I, I'm having a hard time like these these gentlemen too on which one I would buy. Um, if that one uh, with the cart Cartoon Network starring one is a newsstand, and man, if I had to just flip a coin and just roll the dice, whatever, I'd have to pick the Powerpuff Girls just just to see if it's a flash in the pan. Um, and if I lose, you know. Hey, maybe I could still sell it for half the money, you know, at three hundred bucks. Um, but if I win, well, hey, this this book could be fifteen hundred. Who knows, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, really tough. Um, I know Ice Cream Man has a lot of good variants, and the older back issue variants keep flipping for good money. Um, but yeah, just. Looking for the higher ceiling, I'd go with uh, Cartoon Network starring one CGC nine eight. No, I you know forty seven bids on May the fourth. Man, that ought to tell you something's going on. Uh, Jesus Christ! Um, <laughs> you know, you know what's funny? I saw this in a, a three or four pack uh, Marvel mag. Uh, no, uh, DC uh, comic comic uh, that they had at Toys R Us, and I remember seeing this last year, and I could have bought it for like thirty bucks, and it it, it looked like high grade and. I'm kicking myself because I mean, they're out there. They're probably in in uh, uh, some back issue bins, and that might be something to hunt for. But if God, man, six hundred dollars is a lot to throw down on a Powerpuff Girls. Oh my God! <laughs> uh, but just the fact that you see all the bidding going on, uh, I mean that tells you that there's a, a, a pretty good demand and you see only 18 bids for the ice cream man. 
I, I would say if if I was going to for invest and 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 flip it in, in a later date, probably Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, I, I think Jessup was on something there. It might be because it was a newsstand, even though it's not labeled as such. You go ahead, Jessup. Uh, uh, no, I didn't say that, but yeah, it looks like it might be. It's hard to say. <laughs> um, before, we, before we flip to the next one, I went and looked up Naomi number one. It's about 28000 for the okay. number one. Which is so that's A and B really cover? Yeah, yeah, that's both covers. That's really low. Well, the convention one's got to be at, at least 4,000, 3,000, 4,000, somewhere in there. That's what I would guess. Yeah. yeah, so it's maybe five, but it's still. Did you look up the third print? No, it's hard to do it um, without sitting down and going through month by month because the way the Comic Con lists things, you can get a reorder on the A cover that might be enough to make the next month. So, okay. honestly, number one could have more than that if the reorder was on the next month. But there was definitely one of them that was about 4000 So it was either second or third print was 4000 Yeah, uh, I'll go with the Powerpuff Girls on this one, too. I, I don't know. Uh, I've got the Ice Cream Man run. I, I don't have a Cartoon Network starring number one, the Powerpuff Girls. And it doesn't sound like too many other people have them either. There's only four? Yeah, four out of nine, eight. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll take that book. I, I mean, don't get it twisted. I'm not buying either one of these books, but if you if you, if you had a gun to my head, I, I'm going to buy it to flip. Well, you don't have to die to have one of the books, dude. <laughs> 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 uh, I don't, I don't um, feel like a creepy old man, you know, debating on a Powerpuff Girls and or an ice cream man. Yeah. You know? <laughs> hey, I buy a lot of Shira, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've already seen pictures of uh, live action Powerpuff Girls, right, for the series, and you know the internet's doing with what it does like trolling on the pictures, like tearing it apart. But who remembers the same thing happening to Titans? Right? Like the exact same thing. It was more happening. Starfire. Starfire. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I feel like it's kind of the same kind of crowd that's doing the same thing um to the Powerpuff Girls. Cause it, you know, that's a great point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean we're just seeing offset production pictures, you know, we haven't seen a trailer yet or anything like that. You know, it's supposed to be a darker series. They're older. So it. I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens when we actually do see a trailer. Um, Ice Cream Man, like, you know, I feel like that got optioned, like, what, about 20 issues in or something like that, somewhere around there. And, you know, the series wasn't really, I wouldn't say it was on a lot of people's, people's radar until, what, the Dr. Seuss homage came out. When it was supposed to be a different cover or something like that, um, I felt like people started paying attention to the series more then, uh, especially when you get later printings for that book. Uh, but it's hard to tell to see, I guess, with what independent um, options they're going to do. Uh, I don't have either or of these books. Um, I think I have a later printing for Ice Cream Man number one. Uh, but there is a B cover for this too for Ice Cream Man. Hey, to be honest, I, I just found out just now from you that this was becoming a TV show. So. Oh really? Yeah, I didn't think. I honestly didn't. Think, you know what I mean? To me, I know they make comics out of everything, but there's certain things that I don't think of as comic properties. Really, I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong about that, or maybe it was just past my past my era, or. I don't know, but okay. Yeah, I just which one? Powerpuff, you're saying, or ice cream? Yeah, Powerpuff. I did not know. So I just looked it up and looks. Yeah, announcement like three weeks ago with the live action stuff. So I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's yeah. A it's a little like, more palatable. Okay. Of why why the prices are both like kind of right yeah. yeah yeah, but I think still like with Ice Cream Man, we still don't know exactly what the series is going to be about, or if it's going to be a movie or a TV show. Um, I still like that. No kind of factor on that. 
but I almost convinced myself with the Powerpuff Girls too. So, uh, gun to the head, Ice Cream Man. All right. Final answer. All right. Let's see what I have for the last book. So I have Wolverine number 88, uh, CGC at a 9.8, the deluxe edition, or Marvel Comics Presents 72, also at a CGC 9.8. So I kind of base this around the, the rumor about the uh, uh, Wolverine becoming a Disney Plus series. So I don't know how strong that rumor is. Uh, if someone else on the panel knows, maybe a little would- more than I do. I would like to preface everybody's comments by saying, did you ever think either of these books would be above $100 and 9.8? And yeah. if you did, why do you not have a long box of them? <laughs> uh, yeah, not at all, man. <laughs> not at all. This, These numbers are crazy. Um, I don't put too much credence in that, in that uh, Wolverine show. Uh, the the Deadpool book, I mean, that book did when, I think it was when the first Deadpool movie came out, that book started to really heat up, and it was still able to be found for, you know, five bucks or less. And it's still going pretty steady for all now, so that's been a good while. Um, Marvel Comics Presents 72, that was a dollar book until... Three months ago, I think. I would I'd put my money in that Wolverine nine eight. I think there's I'm guessing there's less of them graded nine point eight and less that will grade a nine point eight versus that Marvel Comics presents. Yeah, I, I mean I go with you on that one. Uh I think uh at six seventy five that's I mean that's even that's less than it's been selling for. I'm pretty. I think uh, there's. Uh, I know like a newsstand. I, th- I think we had it on uh, uh, Flipside Market Report was like twelve or thirteen hundred dollars in a nine eight, which makes uh, makes no sense to me. Uh, so this one for me, it's weird because I I like both books. Uh, I mean, t- it's, it's some for some of us like. Uh, like John just said about uh, about you know never thinking it would ever be worth uh, this much, uh, it doesn't doesn't make a ton of sense. You know what I mean? I think these books, all of us have been like, oh, I'm not paying eight bucks for one of these and left them there, you know, like more than a lot of times, and just you know gone with it forever. But whenever you know it five or less, be picking them up, especially the Wolverine eighty eight. Um, I actually I, I love the com I love the Marvel Comics presents, but uh, to me, hundred uh, percent being uh, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine uh, together there, uh, I'm I'm going with that one. I actually, I actually like the cover a little better on the uh, on the MCP, but uh, pretty much pretty much I think I'm going with Wolverine eighty eight, and um, I don't know if that's a high sale for the. I mean, it was only a couple of days ago. Looks like. I don't know if that's a high sale for the Wolverine 88 or not, but um, to me, uh, that just it's just sort of a better long term. It, it, you you sort of infu- I know it's Weapon X, whatever, but like you're infusing two two of the most uh, popular characters of last uh, 40 years uh, together on the cover. Um, you know the the Lux edition or whatever you want to say. Uh, so there is a difference in that. When I don't I don't think everybody always knew that. Um, and yeah, so so to me, I'm just going. With, I'm going with Wolverine eighty eight. Yeah, for me, the um, Wolverine eighty eight has always been a desirable book. It's been like, you know, fifteen to twenty five dollars um, to get that book, and it's always been like a, a book that collectors of Wolverine and X Men, uh, also Deadpool, that that they chase this book. They have to have it in their collection. Like every single beginner, X Men, Wolverine, Deadpool collector, they have. I mean, this is one of the books that they have to have to have in their collection. Um, it's a great battle cover too. Um, I also see a lot of gold labels um, of this book. Even people grading this book like, like not perfect nine eights. They bring it to a convention, they get it signed by Kubert, and you know it's. 
just going to stay in the collection and sit there. Um, the Marvel Comics Presents 72. I've been seeing a lot of um, haul pictures of this book on um, Instagram. A lot of people sharing like they have tons of these and bragging, oh, yeah, I'm going to make so much money, you know, on the secondary market on this book. It is getting super hot. Um, so, yeah, uh, that could probably hit maybe a thousand bucks because CGC is is really, really um, behind, right? So uh, all those people s submitting them, well, I don't, I don't think they're going to get this price when they get them back. Uh, it could be less than this. Um, but there's been a rumor that Hugh Jackman mentioned something. I'm not sure if it was credible. Um, that he would Jackman said, yeah, he may be interested in doing a, a movie with uh, as coming back as Wolverine and doing it in a Deadpool uh, movie. So it's tough. Uh, Aaron, you must really, really <laughs> like to jerk her chain, you know, because man, you know, this is a this is a tough show today. Um, Sweet. But me. <laughs> it's what happens when I get out of the Puma cage. You know, I have time to like con concentrate, meditate, and come up with better books to compare to. You know, after you get you rabies it. or something, you're, 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 <laughs> you know, you're killing us, man. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, ah, so Wolverine '88. Uh, just because it's been a longer known book with no more new collectors coming in they're gonna want that book more i feel like in my opinion so i do the wolverine 88 9.8 uh me too and it, that that looks like a newsstand that wolverine 88 it doesn't look like a direct because i've got a few of them I think wait it, does it say direct on the side yeah I think yeah it, does. It, it is a direct oh, edition oh man yeah I, uh, I've got a, I've got a new stand. I, shit, I, I better send them off. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, that the blue with the red and the black, I, I mean, the cover, the cover is the iconic cover, too. I mean, I, I, I mean, they're both great covers. Don't get me wrong. And, and I mean, you could see a lot more upside with 72, but Man, that that Wolverine uh, Deadpool, uh, that's tough to get in a high grade because of the 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 card stock. I mean, you get a color break on there; it's white and it sticks out like a man. It's ugly. Um, a nine eight Wolverine uh, on uh, eighty eight all day. It's just harder to get in a nine eight, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm with you guys. I think it's unanimous. Um, I would take the Wolverine 88, but I do it. I did. I have a shit stack of those Marvel Comics presents. Um, <laughs> I I don't have a short box or a long box, but I did clean out New Dimension Comics when I was there. They had like maybe 25 of them. Damn. They had a. Uh, and then uh, like the rest of that Sam Keith run after that, like all those. I love all those covers. Yeah. And the final issue too is really hard to find, but uh, yeah, dude, I, I would take the Wolverine eighty eight. I have a few of them, but I don't have a nine eight candidate. What was the final issue? Was it one hundred? Uh, one seventy six, I think. One seventy six for, for Marvel Comics presents. Oh, okay, okay. It's a skull cover. It's pretty sick. Nice. Uh, so w when I actually got back into conventions, uh, Adam Kubert was at a convention and I actually brought a Wolverine 88 for him to sign. And uh, I guess this was like before I knew CGC had witnesses that you had to grab and all that. Cause I had been to a convention before where they were at, you know, at the end of the table for you to like fill out all that and that they were there to witness. Uh, but I got him to sign it anyways. Um, but it was funny when he was signing it, he was like, I remember doing this this cover i was so lazy when i did it like blah 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 and i was just like are you really gonna tell me that as i'm getting this book signed by you <laughs> but like all right <laughs> um i mean i still got it signed and 
the reason why it's like it's the first time that you see Deadpool and Wolverine battle each other. Uh, and with the Marvel Comics Presents 72, I bought that whole like story arc of Weapon X, uh, I think at the same convention for like 20 bucks, like something like that. When other tables were trying to sell it for like 40 or 50, or even just the book by itself for like 20 bucks or 40 or 50. I don't, I don't remember. Um, so I, I would say I definitely want a 9 8 copy of the Wolverine 88. Uh, but that also might just because I looked at the census numbers um, with the Wolverine 88 Deluxe Edition, there's a 61 9.8s, 62 9.6s, a total of 189 graded. And then for the Marvel Presents 72 at a 9.8, there's 498 and then 339 9.6s with a total of 1,128 graded. So I think those numbers uh, kind of speak for themselves. But I mean, you know, but at the same time, how many first appearances does Wolverine need in different versions? Right? I mean, maybe that's just me thinking that out loud. But, at least two more. At least two more? Yeah. Like, with I, like 10 more. The, the only other one I like is Old Man Logan. I mean, that's, I think that's a solid story. The, oh, yeah, the patch, the Weapon X, I mean, it's, it's all the same character to me. Yeah. I mean, what is Hugh Jackman doing better than Wolverine? Like, I I don't understand. Like, is he that well off that he doesn't need to do any movies? Because, like, what does he want to do? Broadway or like? Well, that's he what he was originally doing before playing Wolverine. You know. I mean, what are you I mean, doing? You're just getting older. I mean, Jesus Christ. That, that's what he was doing before. He was doing the Australian Broadway, whatever that's called. Like, you know, he's a, he's a dancer. Come on, Hugh. <laughs> You're getting Joe all worked up. Yeah. He'll come back and play Wolverine. I mean, it, it's like you know, Robert Downey. Like, they're all like, well, I'm done. And then Downey makes some shitty movies. And now... You might get him in uh, some artificial intelligence now. You know, it's like, dude, play that character until you die. Because, like, <laughs> nobody else wants to see you in anything else. I think for people like us that liked Wolverine and like Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, that's what we want to see. But I don't think that's what – he liked doing that role because it's different for him. But if you look at his stuff now, it's more about – acting and the art and all this stuff i just looked up because like you said he's been doing uh page production i just looked up this one he's got coming out reminiscence a scientist discovers a way to relive your past and uses a technology to search for his long lost love I can't yeah, wait. Dude, that that's not a, a movie that the wolverine fans are going to go and see well, and my, my wife keeps wanting me to watch this greatest showman crap, and I'm like, you're yeah, gonna ruin exactly. Wolverine for me. You don't, you don't get it. Yeah, like exactly. I'm not. No, dude, yeah. my Wolverine runs through forests and and say and saves X23. He doesn't, he doesn't. I don't know, cry in a circus or whatever the hell happened in that movie. Let's face it, he's he's got more emotions than us. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, he's a great he actor, but man. You put him with Ryan Reynolds as much as Ryan's been calling him out and uh, all the inside jokes with Wolverine. I mean, you put him in a movie with Ryan Reynolds, uh, man. You're you're that's going to break some records. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's exactly what's going to happen, dude. They're just trolling. Uh, are you. What do you think that paycheck would be for him to come back and do Deadpool four or enormous? A, a huge dude. So oh, just slow much. play it. it. It'll come, dude. He's not gonna. He's not stupid. He's not gonna turn down that much money. At least that's my guess. I'd put oh, money man. on it. Okay, you're hey, making me. What's what's the always ongoing rumor that if uh, Wolverine shows up in the Avengers, Hugh Jackman would return? I mean, who else has heard that? Is it just me? I mean, I'm, I don't know, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't want him in the Avengers. <laughs> I want him doing his own stuff or Deadpool, or I want the freaking X Men. Yeah, Deadpool three 
his leg gets blown off and it grows back as Hugh Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm, I'm ready for all that. What was that uh, tweet that Ryan Reynolds put out that uh, it was supposed to be a Wolverine and Deadpool movie or something like that that was supposed to be based off of a parody of another movie? I didn't even see that. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, but I mean, I think Disney like X that script or something like that, and they have a different version or something. I I don't know. I was kind of following it, but didn't really care. I mean, I'm excited about it, but yeah, yeah I've been I reading be, I, stuff that the that the people that that are like the people that aren't comic book people but like Marvel movies, they don't want to see a Deadpool Marvel movie because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deadpool, you know, it, it's it's a graphic movie. It's swearing, and that's not Disney's type of movie. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they do because they did say it would be rated R or whatever, or they were going to start yeah. dipping into that. So, I'm well, and, to see you know, they're... everybody forgets that Pretty Woman was a Disney movie, right? And didn't uh, Julia Roberts play a hooker? <laughs> it was a Disney so movie. The Disney she played a hooker. <laughs> yeah, I think she did. Yeah. Right? Dude, the she mouse likes money, her. dude. It was a Disney movie. That's so not what you call it these Deadpool. days. That's a working woman. So, <laughs> all right, all right. I don't know what the PC terminology is. <laughs> um, uh, all right. We, so we have a few more minutes. Um I don't have any pickups. Does anyone else have any? Or no. Not? Yeah, Phil's got some. I got some. Right. Phil, Phil, you want to okay. go first? No, you go first, Phil. Yeah, so um, I was in um, – I went to Ohio. Um, I miss Sleepy for some reason. Yeah. I don't know. We're, I was looking for the – We were at the, the same show, and Phil left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I, during the, that's when you got to start digging under the floor. You know, you well, catch up after a while once you've gone through all the good stuff. <laughs> well, that's where I met Carter. He was underneath the table. Yeah, <laughs> Mercenot was literally underneath the table, and I'm like, oh, jump up heads, like, like while well, well, looking at the same books or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I also met Nico there too. Um, so I spent I spent a total of two hours in Ohio. I drove six hours. I woke up four o'clock in the morning. I drove from Virginia to oh, uh, Akron, Ohio, um, made one quick stop. So I spent like an hour at the con, 30 minutes at another local comic book shop, and another 30 minutes at another local comic book shop. So um, this is what I did. So I'll start with my Raws first. Um, so I picked uh, G.I. Joe 21. It was a beater for um, 35 bucks. You know, that's solid. Um, picked up a Daredevil 2 from uh, Bill Pappas. Um, this was like 175 It wasn't bad, you know? Couldn't go wrong. I think I got him down to like 150 It was like a low grade. Um, when I met Carter and Nico, I, I picked up this reprint. I don't know if this is any good or not. Um, I think this was like an action figure. Um... Yeah. 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 From yeah, the Marvel yeah. Legends. Yeah. And this was, yeah, five bucks. So oh, that's a good I took, took a shot at it. There's none on eBay. So I don't know what, what it's going for. I've, so, um, I've, sold, I've sold them for 30, 40 bucks. In, oh, okay. Like, literally, literally trashed condition. Wow. And it's been a long yeah. time since I had one. So who knows now? Yeah. This this is like a VF condition. It's not bad. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, I always am cool with Spawn um, nice. newsstands. Um, these were eight dollars a piece. This um, this hanging one, right? Um, I think it sold for like three fifty and nine eight. So it's the prices are all over the place for these. So why not take a shot? Um, this is the first sin. Uh, that was eight bucks at a uh, local comic shop. I got really lucky on this one. This was twenty five dollars. Kanan showed up um, in that bad batch uh, first episode, so I assume he's gonna come back. This is going for like fifty bucks right now. 
And this was the uh, the Bam second and Charles uh, variant. Uh, he gets in Looney, a little side action. Uh, this was Star Wars Adventure Seven, and uh, I got I this for one twenty. This is the first the Honda. Yeah, this is the uh, yep the retailer incentive cover, the one in ten, and this is cool because it has all of the Rebels characters on one cover with with Chopper, and this is the only cover that has all of them on there, besides the magazine. So the Rebels magazine one. Um, this was another local comic book shop by. Um, it's the first Red X. I think it was like a nine zero. It was like they had eighty bucks on it. They had like a ten percent off sale on her on these on all their books. Uh, I was really really happy with this book. It was a uh, Fantastic Four twenty first Molecule Man. They had it as a very fine. Um, I think it's a seven. Um, they had like four hundred seventy bucks on it. I was I was super happy. I think I think Secret Wars is coming really soon. I heard a I heard from one of my sources it is going to happen. They didn't quote a source, but yeah, you know, why not? You know, I mean, if it hits at 80, it's like an instant $2500 book. So I'll I'll do that. Uh got this from Lauren. He does a lot of shows in the Midwest. Um and uh so it's a call variant for Invincible Iron Man 1. Uh, so I got him down to 175 on this one. I love that cover. This I book is getting... too, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the Jeff the Call variant. Uh, these are clearing off eBay. These uh, X Men 97 first Leandra. I don't know why they're people are super super aggressive in getting this book. Um. This was a steal for fifty bucks on the six zero. I mm. paid one hundred thirty on this one. I'm like, yeah, sign me up. Give me that book. Uh, this was like two fifty. Um, Avengers Annual uh, ten nine four. Um, I mean, CGC's behind, right? So why buy raw books? Um, when the show really doesn't have that many like ohio for me when i usually go on trips i usually see a lot of mid-grade raw books maybe you'll get an 8-0 right but when i when i visited this time i'm not sure what, what you've seen like in your travels um sleepy but like yeah man like i was looking at like invincible iron man 9 right and the best raw copy i saw was like an 8-0 for a hundred bucks, like I couldn't do it, you know. Uh, I picked this one up for four hundred bucks. Um, this is X Men one hundred. It's the classic old X Men versus new X Men cover. Um, so you got giant size X Men one, super hot, right? That's like going through the roof. X Men ninety four is following. People think it's ninety five. Um, that people that people are chasing, I I believe um, this is the one after. And the collectors always at the at the booth are seeking this book if they if they're priced out on the ninety four. Um, and it's also the first appearance of the X Sentinels. So the old X Men, um, they're they're actually not real. They're robots. They're they're Sentinels. So could it be something that they adapt to bring them in? And explain the Sony verse. Hey, maybe you know. And then this is my last book. I picked up uh, Marvel Spotlight Five. Um, I got it for like, I got it for ten fifty and a three zero. And I think this is gonna chase a Hulk one eighty one. Presents really well. I thought it was a four zero just looking at it. So I was just really happy. Like, okay, well, this is worth a drive to Ohio just to grab a Grail. So that's what I got. I'm not sure if you guys have anything else. For pickup. Congrats. Thank you. I think Joe said he had some stuff. Jessa, what did you think of at that uh, that last con that we were at in terms of graded comics? Usually, Ohio is not where you buy graded comics or sell graded comics at a convention. Definitely people, not at the Harper Show. No, people are not willing to spend a lot. 
usually, so people don't bring them. I I saw like yeah. a raw uh, Amazing Spider Man one twenty nine. Like I didn't I didn't look at it. They were asking fifteen hundred. Like I was tempted, but I yeah, already you, bought. You can get. Mm. Uh, there's no no question. You can get older books raw, but there's a couple people that that deal in graded books and they just they don't really bring them. I don't know. I mean, they'll bring them. I just don't see them selling. I guess. Uh, my local LCS had uh, dollar back issues, so I picked up these uh, Scar Son of Fault variants. I got them for a buck. So there's rumors that he's supposed to make an appearance uh, in the new Immortal Hulk, or I think I don't know. So, but it's a variant, a buck. I picked it up. Um, got a couple of these. The Black Panther Secret Invasion. It's a it's a hardcover to have in high grade, and these these look pretty crispy, so I picked them up. Um, what issue number is that? I like that. Uh, it's issue forty one. It's a scroll variant, right? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, it's a first print. So, and I mean they they look like nine eight candidates, so. Um, it's a great cover. Got this uh, second print. Nice, really beautiful. Got it for a dollar. I couldn't believe it. So I was like, I couldn't Damn. get it fast enough. Have you looked up prices for that? Yeah, they. I mean, they're pretty high. So yeah, I uh, found a Nightcrawler variant from the Marvel Now number one. Thought it was a cool cover. Then. Y'all are going to trip out. Let me see. So, hold on. Hold on. There we go. So, I got like 40 of these. <laughs> Wolverine Delato, number one. That is a good pick. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, if, if you guys want one, just, you know, send me an address. I'll send you one because, like, I don't want God to punish me. So, <laughs> you know, and then uh, y'all ain't gonna believe this shit. Hold on. So I got like I got more in in the other room. I've got like nine of these and like ten of these. I found a variant too. Second print variants. Oh, wow. Yeah, <clears throat> it's awesome. And then lastly, I got this one. It's uh, we were talking about Wolverine Deadpool, so that one from uh, Wolverine Origins. I love that cover. So, and that's it. But uh, yeah, if you guys want a copy of uh, the Delato, I got <laughs> I got a shit done, man. And they're all high grade too. So it's one of Delato's uh, first first Marvel, I think. Because he was doing Red Sonia, and then he jumped over. I think this was one of his first. Uh, I'll double check it, but you know, uh, Delato, his stuff has kind of cooled off a little bit. But you know, as the years go by, you know, uh, some of his early stuff. Uh, I mean, it still holds up. I don't know. What do you guys think? Good stuff. I don't know where you find it all, man. I just I got nowhere to look over here. That's Texas, Texas, that, Texas. That Texas. Great cover. Stuff here. <clears throat> Good. Well, thank you everyone know. for playing Dealer Flipside. Um, you know, hope you guys enjoy it and we'll come back another time. So I'm sure I, I'll pick up some more books. Uh, also, uh, if you have suggestions <clears throat> for comparisons that you'd like to see the panel, go ahead and drop it in the comments or send me a, a message on Instagram to keep it from the panel. So either or works, <laughs> but yeah. Or let us know what you think of it. So <clears throat> anything else, guys? No, nope, that was fun. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thanks, man. No problem. So I'm not sure what day this is going to premiere, but make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and catch all our great content. Peace.